Hello everyone, welcome to this week's journey into the world of Forex. In the last few weeks we've been dealing with a lot of popular indicators trying to get you all acquainted with the tools you all need to help you succeed in the market and today we'll be getting into the stochastic and the relative strength index. For now, we'll focus on the stochastics. Developed by George Lane, this indicator measures the relationship between the closing price of an issue, that's the currency pair, commodity or index, and its price range over a predetermined period of time. Lane's basic premise is as follows. Daily closes tend to accumulate near the extreme lows of the day. Periods of price increases tend to measure closes that accumulate near the extreme highs of the day. The stochastic identifies the precise moment at which bulls or bears are becoming stronger or weaker. Traders are better off trading with winners while pitting themselves directly against the losers. The stochastic is currently one of the most popular oscillators and should form part of your trading toolbox. In particular, traders who use strict computerized systems to execute their trades find that stochastic oscillators have many good qualities. For example, the stochastic has an excellent track record for eliminating bad signals. More specifically, the stochastic uses several steps with the express purpose of filtering out market noise the type of ultra short term movements that do not relate to the trader's current trend of interest. Like the RSI, stochastics work on a 0 to 100% range and is an oscillator designed to indicate oversold and overbought market conditions. Unlike the wild RSI that has a preferred overbought, oversold setting of 30 to 70%, the most commonly used overbought, oversold setting for the stochastic is 20 to 80 percent. Here is a quick definition. Stochastic is an oscillator that measures overbought and oversold levels in the market. It compares the closing prices in a market to the high and low prices for that market over a certain period of time. Stochastic is calculated by taking the lowest low price and the highest high price for a number of previous trading periods, usually 14. The difference between the current closing price and the lowest low is divided by the difference between the highest high and lowest low and the result is multiplied by 100. The product, expressed as a percentage, is considered to be the stochastic oscillator. Okay, okay, we know it's becoming very poetic right now, so let's simplify, shall we? When the stochastic oscillator rises above 80%, the market is overbought and when it falls below 20% the market is oversold. So stochastic can be seen as strong buying and selling signals respectively. As a rule of thumb we buy when the market is oversold and sell when the market is overbought. When using stochastic foreign exchange traders need to take into account the fact that the forex market being a 24-hour market has no closing prices. Forex traders typically use the price at the time of the New York Stock Exchange's close as the Forex market's closing price since volume of trading drops off shortly after the close of the New York Stock Exchange. You can see that the stochastic has been showing overbought conditions for quite some time. Based on this, we can guess that the price will, yes, drop. Because the market was overbought for such a long period of time, a reversal was bound to happen. That is the basics of the stochastic. Many traders use the stochastic in different ways, but the main purpose of the indicator is to show us where the market conditions could be overbought or oversold. Now, over time, you will learn to use the stochastic to fit your own personal trading style. Okay, let's move on to RSI. The Relative Strength Index, or RSI, is similar to the stochastic in that it identifies overbought and oversold conditions in the market. It is also scaled from 0 to 100. Typically, readings below 30 indicate oversold, while readings over 70 indicate overbought. The RSI was originally developed by Wells Wilder and was not initially developed to be used as an overbought and oversold indicator. 
Its main purpose was to identify failure swings. However, because the majority of modern day forex traders use it as an overbought and oversold indicator, it works well for both methods. The modern theoretical definition for the relative strength index is a technical momentum indicator that compares the magnitude of recent gains to recent losses in an attempt to determine overbought and oversold conditions of an asset. The RSI calculates the ratio of the upward trends compared to downward trends and measures this as an index expressed by a figure of between 0 and 100%. The RSI can be used just like the stochastic. We can use it to pick potential tops and bottoms depending on whether the market is overbought or oversold. Here's an hourly chart of the pound against the dollar. The pound has been climbing and has moved about 500 pips over the course of two weeks. However, the RSI rose above 70, signaling that there might be no more buyers left in the market and that the move could be over. Prices then reversed and headed back down. The three most popular options to choose from in terms of relative strength value are RSI with a period of 9, RSI with a period of 14, and RSI with a period of 21. This is applicable on all chart frames such as the 5 minute chart, the hourly chart, as well as the 4 hourly chart and the daily chart. The most popular setting is 14 and is the one we use primarily throughout the webinar series and through our trainings. The RSI is a very popular tool because it also has been used to confirm trend formations. If you think a trend is forming, take a quick look at the RSI and look at whether it is above or below 50. If you are looking at a possible uptrend, then make sure the RSI is above 50 if you're looking for a possible downtrend, then make sure the RSI is below 50. In the beginning of the chart here, we can see that a possible uptrend was forming. To avoid fakeouts, we can wait for RSI to cross above 50 to confirm our trend. Sure enough, as RSI passes above 50, it is a good confirmation that an uptrend has actually formed. The more confirmation points you can develop, the more successful you will become. For example, the integration of trends, Fibonacci analysis, pivot point analysis, the moving average trend indicator, and other tools you will learn about. Remember, isolation is a no-no. The common trading belief when trading on the RSI indicator is to start looking at selling the currency pair just as it has broken into the overbought RSI area. The RSI just broke above the 70% line. Most novices assume this is a good time to get into a sell position. Because the RSI was not originally developed to be used as an overbought, oversold indicator, the above presumption would be totally wrong. Similarly, if prices break into the oversold area, many novices start looking to buy the instrument. Never just presume that the indicators are going to turn when they have just broken into the overbought and oversold areas. The observation seems quite logical. Since an instrument is overbought, surely it should start selling off soon, and if oversold, vice versa, right? Unfortunately, this logic gets most novices brutally burnt in the marketplace, as it would be a severe mistake for you to simply assume the above reasoning is correct. It is very well known amongst professional traders that market price action is usually at its strongest towards the end of its trend wave moves. The reasoning for this is that prices have been trending up and they tend only to retrace when the RSI has crossed back below the RSI overbought level. The bottom line is that prices can hang within overbought or oversold areas. This is determined by the current direction of the trend. RSI values usually hang at the bottom of a downward trend and at the top of an upward trend. The benefit of using the RSI and other indicators is that they will assist you in timing your trades. Traders who don't believe in integrating indicators into their technical trading toolbox do so because they really don't understand how to use them correctly. 
It's important to accurately understand the behavior of the RSI with different relative strength values and why the 14 relative strength value is the most popular one. The RSI 9 is very quick to reach overbought and oversold levels. This may produce too many false signals. The RSI 21 in turn is very slow and may never provide signals. In actual fact, the RSI 21 very rarely reaches overbought or oversold levels, whereas the RSI 9 possibly reaches overbought or oversold levels a bit too often. So let's go ahead and add the RSI to our chart. Knowing that MT4 has many shortcuts, today we're going to use the indicator shortcut found in the charts toolbar. So we're going to click on that, scroll down to oscillators, and then pick the relative strength index from that drop down. We will make sure that our levels are 30 and 70. If you'd like to add levels to that, you can go ahead and add or edit the ones that are already there. So you'd be adding if you didn't have any levels. And then under parameters, we want to make sure that the period is 14 and you want to leave the apply to drop down as the close. You can change the style if you'd like, you can change the thickness and make the lines dotted or you can change the color. Make sure you don't change the fixed minimum which is between 0 and 100 and click OK. And boom, you have your RSI. There are two types of stochastics, fast and slow. The main difference between fast and slow stochastics is summed up in a concept we should all be familiar with right now, sensitivity. The fast stochastic is more sensitive than the slow stochastic to changes in the price of the underlying security and will likely result in many transaction signals. But to understand the difference, you should first understand what the stochastic momentum indicator is all about. The stochastic consists of two lines. One line is called the percentage K line and the other the percentage D line. We will start our explanation with the K-line as this is the line the D-line is based on. The percentage K-line is called the Stochastic Momentum Oscillator and is used to compare where a currency pair's most recent price closed relative to its price range over a given period of time. Now 14 is the popular mathematical number used as the period of time and it can, depending on the trader's goal, represent hours, days, weeks, or even months. Note that the percentage K line simply shows current price compared to the average of the highest and lowest prices over the last 14 periods. This value is then plotted on the stochastic indicator as a percentage. The percentage D line is the line that we follow closely as it will indicate any major signals in the chart. The D-line is actually a three moving period moving average derived from the K-line. And look here, the current K-line is under the 20% oversold level. This simply means that the current price is below 20% of the value relative to the average of the last 14 hours highs and lows. The percentage K-line simply reflects the difference between the last 14 hour closed sessions compared to the current price. So let's place the stochastics on our chart. We would use the indicator shortcut in the charts toolbar. And since we've used the stochastic already, it shows up on our favorites list. You will find this under the oscillators list. The percentage K line observation period should be 14 and the percentage D line and the slow should be three. The MA method, moving average method, should be exponential and the fixed minimum and maximum should be zero and 100 respectively. The main line will be purple and the signal will be C green. And lastly, our levels will be 20 and 80. The traditional trading method for stochastic is to watch as the percentage D line begins to change and move into either the overbought, that is over the 80 line, or oversold, that's under the 20 line. 
those positions and crosses back below or above the line. Now remember, prices tend to make their strongest moves towards the end of, a, of cycle trends. In stochastic terms, this means that as the percentage D line enters the overbought or oversold area, the strongest move may occur. Often traders hold onto their positions until the D line crosses above or below the overbought or oversold level again. But be careful of being too hasty to buy or sell once the percentage D line has just crossed over the overbought or oversold levels. Because professional traders fully understand the strength of price action towards the end of cycle moves, they have adopted a totally unique strategy to signal entry and exit points. Professional traders often look to buy on the first sign of an overbought cross in a trending market and then sell at the first sign of an oversold one. If percentage K and percentage D are both crossing below the 20% level, consider selling until the stochastics has crossed back above the oversold level. Only then consider taking a buy position. This works more consistently on longer chart time frames such as the hourly upwards. We are more inclined to advise that beginner traders should consider using the identification of a solid trend and rather use the stochastic as an overbought and oversold tool. Divergence is a key element for any professional trader. Therefore, you need to start focusing on looking for them when you trade.